Greetings, Eric Backer, naturopath from New Zealand, author of Candida Crusher, formulator of the Candida range of supplements. Thanks for checking out my video. I have a question here, uh, in the, which I've discovered in the YouTube comment section from Dona. Uh, I believe Dona is a lady from Canada. I think she lives in Canada. And um, Dona uh, has got an interesting question here. She wants to know the mistakes to avoid on the Candida cleanse. What are some of the classic mistakes? That people make. Well, I had a thought about donor, and I think there are four key things that we're going to talk about. Four key things. The first key element or mistake people make is making assumptions they've got candida. They don't even know whether they've got candida or not. They may read about it through some blog site or look at a YouTube video and think, I've got candida, I've got to get rid of it. That's what I've got. That's why my hair's falling out, and that's why I'm going blind, and that's why. You know, um, I've got an itchy bum, and that's why I'm getting fat, and that's why I'm tired, and that's why my libido's gone. All these reasons why you may have candida. So be careful not to make assumptions. Because my old man used to say, if you make assumptions, you make an ass out of you and me. If you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Think about it, okay? So just getting a glass of water and doing a spit test is not a candida test, all right? So... Just for your information's sake, um, donor, check out our, which I think you're well aware of, is our quiz on yeastinfection.org. That will give you some idea if you may have, uh, you know, some kind of link there with the yeast infection, okay? And the other thing that I need to inform people of is the best test is the stool test, okay? Because that's actually science, that's a culture, where the stool gets cultured in a lab to see if they can grow yeast off that stool, right? If you can actually grow yeast off a stool sample, especially all three samples, and there's many yeast in all three, you've got a usually a big candida problem. You should not be able to culture live yeast from a stool sample from a healthy person. While it's true to say that candida albicans is a normally occurring uh, yeast in many people's, but not all, not in many people's digestive systems, it's usually dead by the time you pass it out through the stool. So if we find dead yeast in all three samples, we find live yeast in all three samples, we find multiple species of yeast in samples, we find poor levels of beneficial bacteria that are cultured, we find many different bad bacteria that are cultured, we find parasites. These are all answers which we will get when we do a stool test. Okay? You can spit all you want in a glass of water. You're not going to find squat about parasites. You're not going to find anything about beneficial bacteria. I mean, you could have had three pizzas and, and, and half a gallon of Coke the night before you spat in that glass, and that could be all mucus you built up for other reasons uh, other than candida in that glass. You may have a, a problem with your pancreas and stomach. You couldn't break down all those sugars properly, so you coughed up all this mucus. So it may not be candida with the spit test, so be careful. The spit test gives us some indication, but it is not an ironclad guarantee you will have a yeast infection. Now, there are many other tests you can do. You can do antibody blood determination. You can even go to people who do weird kind of stuff, like, you know, uh, get a little dowsing thing over a hair sample. You might as well go to a tarot card reader if you're going to fall for that sort of crap, you know. So don't make assumptions. As I said before, half the people that consult me, when I test them, in fact, they've got no candida at all. They've got a bad bacterial problem. They've been on antibiotics. They didn't necessarily get candida overgrowth. They got a bacterial imbalance. Or they nuked or fried all of their beneficial bacteria and there's nothing there. Or, like many patients, they've got one big parasite problem. So many people who've got parasites, in fact, think they've got candida. So don't make assumptions. Otherwise, you make a... You, um, you know what I mean. Anyway, I said that before. So not testing and making assumptions is mistake number one. You need to avoid making that mistake. If you've been unwell for a long time and you really believe you've got candida, please do a comprehensive stool analysis, including parasitology. Your functional medicine doctor or naturopath will organize that um, for you. I'm quite sure that he or she will. If not, uh, contact me and I'll help you out in that regard. Number two, ultra strict diets. Okay, This is a mistake many people make. Okay. They go on these amazingly tough diets. You know, they'll go on the SCD diet, or they'll go on the GAPS diet, or the FODMAPs. They'll go, absolutely, we will eat like this, and we will eat nothing outside of these parameters. What a load of crap! Do you live your life like that? 
Are you ultra strict about other things in your life apart from your diet? You know, are you like Dustin Hoffman in The Rain Man? It's nine o'clock. I'm going to go to the toilet. You don't live your life like that. Come on. Nobody can live with an ultra strict regime. Not for long anyway. All right? You'll get bored. You'll get sick. You, you annoy the hell out of people all around you who think that you're a weirdo or a freak when you start eating like this. All right? There's a difference between eating a healthy diet and an ultra strict diet. Now, some people I know have an ultra anal diet which is a bit different from an ultra-strict diet. The ultra-anal diets are where they weigh every little thing. This banana is weighing one half ounce more than this banana, so I can't have that in my allowance. You know, so for God's sakes, don't think like that. Don't weigh everything you eat. Don't look at packets and count every calorie on every food you eat. You're not a robot. You're not an android. You're a human being. Okay. So ultra-anal is out. Ultra-strict is out. Once you start really getting highly selective of all the carbs in your diet, I'm, I'm talking like really selective, and you start chopping lots and lots of them out, you can actually go into like a ketosis state, almost like what diabetics do. And remember, many diabetics end up with a yeast infection. So research has also shown that people with very high protein diets who form ketones in their diet as a consequence of carb starvation can actually fuel a yeast infection. So there's no proof that going on an ultra-strict carb diet is going to save your soul from candida. Okay? Any kind of food can feed candida, especially if what we'll look at a little bit later on <clears throat> is when you're diet-focused and you're not understanding about the stress connection. Because when you become very, very focused on diet, it becomes a stress in its own right. You annoy the hell out of people around you. You start annoying yourself after a while. It becomes a stress. You can't live like this for long, all right? Lots of these diets like GAPS and SCD were not designed for you to be on for 19 years. They were designed for short duration and to get you the hell off that diet. I had a patient in Sydney who's been for nine years on the SCD diet. Nine years! Not only he, he forced his wife and all his children to the point where the son wouldn't talk to him anymore. <clears throat> this guy annoyed everybody around him. And I said, well, how do you feel? You've been on this SCD diet for nine years. I feel terrible. I said, well, then maybe it's time you got off this crappy diet, you know. So don't become too strict with your diet. Loosen up a little bit. Breathe. Smell the roses. Enjoy different kinds of foods. There's no proof that a strict avoidance of all carrots and all pumpkin, you know, foods like that, and all chickpeas and all grains is going to cure your gut. There's no proof at all. And in fact, I've never found that to be the case. Most of the patients I see who fully recover from gut disorders, in fact, do eat small amounts of gluten and grains in their diet on a regular basis. It's up to you, but I just don't think it's the way to go. Okay, point number three. Diet focused and not looking at lifestyle. This is a big problem with a lot of people. Lots of people live very stressed lifestyles today. I just read some interesting statistics on SM, on social media and depression, where people who check their uh, SM feed, social media feeds, 58 times or more per week have a 29% increase in depression from people who don't get involved with SM. All right? <clears throat> I was just talking to Tracy about this before, about how when we grew up, I mean, Google came in when I was 38. In 1998, Google came in. Prior to that, we actually used to talk to people. Now, you talk to screens. You don't talk to people anymore. So it's easy to get depressed when you're talking to a piece of plastic the whole time with your fingers, and not actually have eye contact with people. So crappy jobs, crappy relationships, crappy lifestyles, pretending you're happy, eating the best foods, but living a shit life. Is that what you really want? Do you think that food really makes you healthy? What about emotional food? What about being happy? What about enjoying being with other people? Think about that. Isn't that food for the soul? Think about it. I just looked at a very prominent American physician's website about the mistakes people make on the Candida diet. There was not one word of a mention about stress, or cortisol, or adrenal dysfunction or staying up late at night because you're on computers, or having a shitty job that you don't like, 
or being with a shitty person that you don't like, or having shitty relationships with people. No mention of that. So I want you to think right now while you're watching this video about that one person that annoys the hell out of you, or how much you like your job, or how much you like the place where you live, or how much you've been dreaming about a better future, or thinking about things like that. If that rings a bell with you, then that is what you want to focus on, not what kind of a carb you put in your mouth. Right? Think about it. Not testing was number one, making assumptions. Ultra strict diets was number two. Diet focused while forgetting about stress was number three. And the fourth one is poor supplementation or no supplementation, thinking you can get rid of all of these problems just by eating foods. Well, many people I see take dietary supplements to you know, work for parasite cleansing, candida cleansing, but in fact, many of them are not effective. <clears throat> and they'll be ad hoc where they'll buy this and they'll buy that and they'll get a little bit here from you know this website and a bit from that website and they put everything together and it costs them a fortune, a lot of money. And many of these products just don't give people the kind of outcome they're looking for. Now I've worked with patients now for 30 years, a long time. I've used all kinds of products and this is why I designed the Kenzita range. Exactly why. Because I wanted to put together a very simple system that was highly effective where you could get these three products that were going to do the job of 50 products, right? So think about it. I'm not here beating my own drum, but if you want to check out a nice range, check out the Kanzida range, C-A-N-X-I-D-A. -A. It's a range I designed after treating lots of patients over a prolonged period of time. It's not ad hoc. It's a system that works beautifully together. So that's point four. So think about it. First, make sure, darn sure, that you've got candida before you go for it. Right? Make sure also that you understand that going very strict with your diet, you know, for particularly for prolonged periods of times, is a load of crap. It's not going to work. It doesn't work for most of my patients. Think about point number three we spoke about, how you need to focus more on your lifestyle than you do what goes in here. Okay? More, because it's more important. And also think about point four, about taking the right kind of products, which can have a good effect. I hope you got a bit out of this video, Donna. Thanks for the question. Now, as I mentioned previous, please check out the yeastinfection.org uh, quiz if you haven't already done the quiz. Click on the link below in the description box if you're new to this channel and you want to get my Candida report. And last but not least, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.